Be where your feet are. Be where your feet are is a popular phrase my football coach used to tell me every day. And what he meant by this is, wherever your feet are, it's where your focus should be. Where you're in the football field, you should be on football. Where you're in the classroom, you should be on your studies. When you're in this auditorium, you should be on what I'm saying. Be where your feet are. Focus. One of five key points I'm going to be touching on tonight. As a dual sport athlete at Tulane University playing both football and baseball, I've been blessed to learn many valuable lessons both inside and outside of sports. Tonight, I'd like to share some of these experiences. I want to be a voice for student athletes tonight. And the best way I know how is by sharing my story, a student athlete's untold story. And the first thing I need from you all tonight is focus. Now, let me tell you about my typical week. Now, I've done the math. Everyone in this room has 168 hours in a week. But in my week, if you account for eating, sleeping, mandatory and voluntary practices, working out, playing games, traveling, studying, going to class, and everything else, on a good day, I have about three or four hours of free time. That means that if I want to go to an extracurricular, such as an organizational meeting, or if I want to go take a nap, or even hang out with friends, I have roughly three or four hours a day to get that done. Discipline, which is my second point, has become essential to my life. Every day I wake up, I make a list of items that I have to get done. And as I check off each of these lists on my items, I have a little bit more time for things that I want to do as, a time, as opposed to things that I have to do. Being disciplined in time management leads me right into my third point, production. Within these time constraints, I'm expected to be successful by producing results. This production can be measured in various ways. In the classroom, by producing a high GPA, on the field by producing good stats and helping my team win. In society, by being involved in community service and being involved around campus. In all these different environments, they want production. They want results, not excuses. It's challenging for my teachers to understand what it's like to come from a three-hour practice, followed by strength and conditioning, and then go to their three-hour night class and stay alert and attentive. No excuses. My coach doesn't want to hear about how I stayed up all night studying for a test or writing a paper, and that's why the next day at practice, I'm going through the motions. No excuses. My organizations don't want to hear about how I can't attend their meeting because the only reason I'm not going to go to their meeting is because I've been averaging three hours of sleep for the last four nights. No excuses. They all want results, production. This fact brings in how I can accredit my success in being productive leads right into my fourth point, integrity. Now, I believe this picture can summarize what I think success is. This can is an actual can that sits on my desk, and I look at it every single day. <laughs> success comes in cans, not in cannots. I am a huge advocate of the power of your word. If I say that I'm going to get something done, it's getting done, period. One of my life mantras is that you make time for what's important to you, not excuses. So all I want you to just take a moment to reflect. What motivates you? Is it family? Is it money? Your faith? What motivates you? My integrity drives my motivations. Faith, family, friends. What drives your integrity? One of the greatest stories of integrity I've ever been told was by a sports psychologist, Dr. Elko. He came and spoke to my football team my sophomore year, and he showed us this picture. A lot of you might be familiar with this picture, and have probably seen it tattooed on people's bodies. But what you might not know is that the artist that drew that is Albert Stewart, and the reason he drew it was in memory of his brother. When they were teenagers, they had a critical decision to make. They could either both go to the minefields, or one brother could pay for the other brother to go to the art guild, because at the time, being in the arts was the best way to make the most money. So what they decided was that Albert would go to the art guild, and the brother would pay for it by going to the minefield every single day. So after some time, this brother finished the art guild, made some money, and he threw a huge feast in celebration. At the feast, he got up and he made a toast to his brother, thanking him for all the sacrifices he ever made, and said that he now had enough money to send his brother to the art guild. At this, his brother started hysterically crying. He went over to his brother, gave him a big hug, gave him a kiss, and he showed him his hands, those hands. And at that, Albert began to cry because he understood there was no way he would ever be able to take part in the arts. He made the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate sign of integrity, 
to be a man of his word and provide a brighter future for his family and at his own expense. So I want to ask each one of you in here, who would you go to mines for? This leads right into my last point, teamwork. Now, I've been on a lot of teams, and I can say that the teams that are the most enjoyable are the teams that have the most chemistry. And this chemistry is built by building both trust and respect. But these must be earned, not given. You build respect when it's 110 degrees outside, and you have 24, 110 yard sprints to do in under 12 seconds. And you think you're about to pass out, and you're thinking about quitting, and you think you might even throw up. But you keep going because that guy next to you, you don't want him to beat you. And you don't want him to give up. So you push forward. You build trust when you turn a weakness into a strength. When your coach calls you out in the fall and says, you might not make the team because you let the team in strikeouts. And you have the lowest batting average on the team. And you come back in the spring. And not only do you make the team, but you lead the team in hits. In both of these scenarios, not only do you have respect for these people, but you trust that when they're given a challenge, they're going to rise to the occasion and prosper. That's one of the main reasons why I believe that trust is the key to teamwork. I believe that building and mending trust within relationships is absolutely key to having a successful career and also just a beneficial life. Building and mending trust within my relationships has done nothing but benefit my life. That's one of the main reasons why I want to join a business fraternity on campus, because I want to be around that caliber of people that are constantly striving for more, constantly pushing to be at their best, just because being surrounded by those people does nothing but help me elevate my game and make sure that I'm on top of what I'm doing. And in essence, we're all just making each other better. Because whether you're an athlete or whether you're a regular person, it doesn't matter, because when you think about your accomplishments at the end of the day, you don't think about what you did. You think about what you did with those people. You think about the times and the accomplishments that you had with everyone around you. Now, I hope I was able to attain y'all's focus tonight, but I want to make sure I leave y'all with these five key points. Wherever your feet are, that's where your focus should be. Remain disciplined so you can be the most time efficient. Produce results, not excuses. Success comes in cans, not in can -nots. Build trust with others so that you can become part of the ultimate team. Please take these five points with you and watch and see how much you can accomplish. Thank you.